Hi there. Now, if we have a plane, let's say pi, and we take a line L, then the line L could be parallel to the plane, that is, above it or below it, or it could lie on the plane, or it could intersect. So, given these three scenarios, how do we decide which one it is? Well, that's the purpose of this video, and I'll run through a few examples with you. But first of all, let's just go back and look at the equation of a line. Let's say we've got our line then. It's called L, and its equation in vector form would be of the form R equals A plus lambda b. I'm assuming that you're familiar with the vector equation of a line. Remember, r is the position vector of any point on the line, a is a known fixed point, lambda is a variable scalar, and b is a vector parallel to the line. Now if we take the equation of our plane, it can be in various forms. Let's suppose it's in the scalar product or dot product form, that is r dotted with n equals a constant d. Remember r is the position vector of any point on the plane then. n is a vector which is normal to the plane. Let's say that vector has components a, b and c. Then the other form is that if r is the position vector of any point on the plane. Let's say that position vector is x, y, z. Then if I dot x, y, z with a, b, c, then I get the Cartesian form of the plane, which is also going to be useful. So that would be ax plus by plus cz equals the constant d. And you should be familiar with both the Cartesian form and the scalar product form. If not, do check out my videos. Now, if we look at a line that's parallel to the plane, in other words, above or below the plane, or on the plane, then we know that the direction vector of that line, given by b, would be perpendicular to the normal to the plane, n. In other words, the scalar product between b and n would equal zero, the perpendicular rule for two vectors. So for both these cases, we know that b dotted with the normal vector n would equal zero. Okay, so we'll just put that in there. So that leads us to realize then that if b dot n doesn't equal zero, it must be the case when the line intersects the plane. So that gives us a nice test to know if we've got an intersection between a line and a plane. B dot n will not equal zero. So now we need a way of distinguishing whether a line is above the or below the plane or on the plane. Because we know that B dot n is going to equal zero in both of these cases. Now, if a line lies on a plane, then what we would expect is that the point A, which is on the line, should also be on the plane. So we can say then that R will equal the position vector A for this case here. Let's just number this one. So it will satisfy equation one. So just put that in it satisfies equation one. Or it could be that you're using the Cartesian version of the equation of the plane, and if that's the case, then we can say that the coordinates of the position vector of A, let's just put that in, the coordinates of the vector A, then that must satisfy equation 2, the Cartesian equation. Alright, now I just want to run through a couple of examples which will hopefully demonstrate this point. But what I've given you is a line L with this vector equation and a plane pi. 
In each of these, just want to discuss what happens between the line L and the plane pi. Well, the first thing we need to do is to test to see whether the lines are parallel. And we do that then by checking out the direction vector B with the normal vector for the plane. So for this first example here, I've got B dotted with N and B will be the vector 1, 2, 4. OK, 1, 2, 4 there. So just write in column form 1, 2, 4. And we need to dot that with the normal vector, which will have components 2, 3, minus 2, the A, B, C that you see here, OK, in the Cartesian version. So we've got 2, 3, minus 2. And if you dot those two together, you end up with 2 plus 6 plus minus 8. I'll just put minus 8 there. So we've got 8 minus 8 equals 0. So therefore, we know that the lines are parallel. So if they're parallel, we've got to now check out whether the point with position vector A lies on the plane. In other words, we've got to check to see whether it satisfies this equation, taking x to be the 3, y to be minus 4, and z to be 1. OK, so let's just test to see then if that point A is on the plane. So doing that, substituting into this equation the x-coordinate here, which would be 3, we've got 2 times 3 then, and then similarly we're going to have 3 times minus 4, and then minus 2 times the 1. And this comes to a total of minus 8. Now, if A was on the plane, we would expect it to come to 2. But it doesn't, so it's not equal to 2. So what's the conclusion? Well, therefore, L is parallel to pi. OK, parallel to the plane pi. So that's that one. Now, moving on to the next one, you might even like to have a go at this one, see what you come up with. But first of all, whatever we do, always test out to see if it's parallel by doing B dotted with N. Now, I've picked this example, you'll notice, because I've got this in the dot product or scalar product form for the equation of a plane just to give a little bit more variety. So we'll do b dotted with n again, b dotted with n. This time b has the column vector 5, 2, 2. So I just put that in, 5, 2, 2. And we're dotting this with the normal vector, which has components 2, minus 4, minus 1. So 2, minus 4, and minus 1. And dotting this in the usual way, we get 10, then minus 8, and minus 2. And this comes to 0. So we know it's parallel. So again, what we've got to do is test to see if A is on the plane, this point here. So we take the vector, and this time, because we've got it in scalar product form for the equation of plane, we just need to dot this vector with the normal here and see if we get minus 8. So doing that, we've got the vector 1, 3, minus 2 for A, and we dot it now with the normal vector 2, minus 4, minus 1, 2, minus 4, minus 1. And dotting that, what do we get? We get 2, then minus 12, and then plus 2. And this comes to minus 8. And minus 8 it was. So therefore, we know that it does lie on the plane. So in summary then, we can say therefore the line, OK, L lies on the plane pi. Okay, now 
I hope that's given you some idea then how you can determine the nature of a line in relation to a plane. But what I haven't done in this video is given you an example of when b dot n does not equal zero. In other words, if that's the case, the line intersects. But you can check this out in my next video in this series where I show you how we find the point of intersection then if a line intersects a plane. Okay?